because you do not live with mental illness does not mean you have good mental health. And if you do live with mental illness, you can still have good mental health. I know that's true. I'm Wendy Watkins. I'm the host of Making Stuff Up with Wendy, and I live with mental illness and good mental health. If you're looking to improve your mental health, then this is the place that you're going to receive and learn how to use your MSU to live a delicious life. We all make stuff up, so why not make up the good stuff? My guest today is Trish the Dish Car. This woman is on a mission to show women entrepreneurs how to create messaging magic without being salesy. She's a best selling author, an international speaker, an acclaimed sales expert, and she combines proven communication strategies with behavioral science, resulting in a formula that gets past those pitfalls associated with selling. She's a co-founder of Women's Prosperity Network uh, that is about inspiring, supporting, and educated women within a trusted network of professionals. And this woman, Trish, she makes stuff up. Welcome, Trish. I do make stuff up. I was just jamming to Bruce Springsteen. You know, I like the Bruce. We're Hi. on a first name basis. I call him Bruce. He calls me nothing, <laughs> but I call him Bruce. I make stuff up about Bruce all the time, like getting on stage with him, like having conversation, like getting on the back of his motorcycle. I make stuff up about Bruce all the time. I'm a major Bruce make stuff upper. Yes, you are. I yes, would say that 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 is a true fact. Yes. That you do that with Bruce. Well, yay you. I'm so glad you're here, friend. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here. Too bad so we're so far away, but... I know. I know. Hug. Still hug. virtual hug, for sure. The virtual hug. Yes, yes. Yeah. Well, first things first, glad you're here. And to our viewers, thank you for taking the time today to join us for making stuff up with Wendy. Uh, You know, this show, I want to remind you that it's not a replacement for medical treatment, right? This is edutainment, a conversation that Trish and I are going to be having about ways to increase good mental health in your life. And if you're having a mental health crisis, then please call the number that you see up on the screen and uh, also find it in the comments. So we've got that business. Now, second, Trish, I got to give you your MSU because you definitely make stuff up. So I created a little certificate. Yay! I love certificates. Here's your MSU, my friend. Thank you. I'm so excited. I have (laughs) one. I love to put things on my walls that look official. So this is perfect. I need an MSU. I don't have a college degree, so I definitely need an MSU. Thank you. Yep, I'm with you, girl. I I don't have that degree, and I like those initials behind my name, so now you could just put them there because you make stuff up. I do. Absolutely do. All the time, every day. Some good, some not so good. Exactly. And let's, so let's jump in with that. So, so this whole concept of, of making stuff up and that we all make stuff up, so why not make up the good stuff? How do you uh, live this concept of making stuff up in your life what how do you define it like how does it show up well first of all I know everything is made up right and I do have the choice to make up whatever I want to make up so why not choose something good right so for example I am a recovering codependent and when it comes to other people I tend to very much want them to like me and you know, all that good stuff. So when I look at, (laughs) so I work with my sisters, Susan Winner and Nancy Matthews, and in particular with Susan, when we're in a meeting on Zoom in person, but we're physically together somehow, I have to cover my eyes when she talks because I tend to read her face and I make stuff up about what she's saying, like, oh, she doesn't agree with my idea. She thinks it's terrible. She doesn't respect me. Like all this noise that just happens. And literally, I would say, that's what your face is saying. She go, well, sh- close your eyes. <laughs> Seriously, that's close fine. your eyes. So that's a big one. And then, you know, in my relationship with my friends and my husband, It's so easy to look at their face or interpret your actions. So Dan, my husband, he'll get quiet 
when he's normally like the life of the party, right? Everybody loves Dan. He's fun. He makes people laugh. He's always great to people, but sometimes he's not into the being ebullient or whatever that word is. And I'll get worried and I'll look at him and I will think, oh, I must have done something wrong. He must be mad at me for something. And then I'll say, you know, I will eventually say, honey, you know, you seem to be quiet today. What's going on? Sometimes I'll get, am I not allowed to be quiet? Do I always have to be on? Which means something's going on. Mm. Or he'll go, no, I'm just thinking about this job I have to do. Mm. So I've really gotten into the habit as much as I can. I'm not perfect at it to ask uh, what's going on. And I have to say, I'm really lucky because he asks. Like one time I was hibernating and I wasn't in the mood to see people and I was in my room watching TV and he was downstairs and he came up and he said, you know, I haven't seen you much today and you seem to be quiet. And the first place I go when that happens, he says to me, is I think I did something wrong. So we're not alone. We all go down that road or many of us do. And he said, so is it me? Did I do something? Are you okay? And I was like, oh my God, do I love this man? Like to say what's on his mind instead of making up a bad thing. So that's the biggest place I look out for. What am I making up? Is it making sense? Does it make me feel good? If it doesn't make me feel good, I make up something that does. And if I can, I, of course, approach the person and say, Uh, you know, when you said this, I kind of thought you meant that. Can you help me understand? Right. I don't attack. I just ask the question. So that's a big one. And again, as you know, as a codependent way back, I'm always looking for how did I affect that person when, you know, it's not all about me. That's the other thing, (laughs) even though I think it is all about me all the time. It's not. Well, I love what you're saying there, Trish, and I'm sure our listeners are nodding their heads because I am as well. It's like, oh, my gosh, I do the same thing. I make stuff up when Matt is quiet or that it's about me. And then I have to ask, is it about me? Because if I don't, then I go down the rabbit hole thinking right. it's about me and it's not a good thing. So mm-hmm. um, but it is interesting how because of that negative bias in our brain, when we do make stuff up, a lot of the time we can lean that way. Now, unless you're someone like I know yourself, myself, where you practice uh, optimism, practice skills to be able to be a conscious creator and to feel good. Um, but otherwise, we as a, as a population will go down the negative path. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, right? and the social structures The things that have influenced our thinking are so there, but we don't know it. Like they're those unconscious biases, right? Yes. That we have about people. You know, you'll look at how someone is, I'll never forget this story. I was working at the phone company and a woman walked in and we all looked at her and we said, oh, she's a bag lady, right? We all did. And the the service rep who was going to set up her phone service talked to her and after she was gone, I said, Michael, what'd you sell her? He said, oh, I sold her nothing. Do you see how she's dressed? Like she doesn't have any money. And we all watched her walk out of the phone center. We used to have phone centers where you would come in just (laughs) like you do for your cell phones. You'd come in and buy your Mickey Mouse phone. Anyway, I digress. The woman walks out and we watch this bag lady get into a Rolls Royce with a driver. Yeah. Yeah. Like, what was that? Yeah. Yeah. That is that unconscious bias that we have, you know, something that it's definitely a use of an MSU, right? Mm -hmm. Because we're making stuff up about a situation that we don't know. Sometimes it may just come and go. Oh, right. You know, a bad lady move on. But other times, like you said earlier, Trish, it affects the way we feel and the way we act. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, you know, this whole on, you know, actually, one of the things I've been doing for the past year and a half now, middle of 2020, um, with Black Lives Matter, I raised my own awareness of my unconscious biases. And I even started doing a show called Sister to Sister, where I have conversations with my sisters of color to find out what life was about for them because I can't relate, I'm, I was brought up a white girl. And even though I, I had black friends, it's certainly not the same thing. 
And I still find, even after really reading and getting into this and learning for the last two years, year and a half, I still have those unconscious biases. Like, why is it I look at a black kid walking down the street and I get <gasps> one of those feelings, right? Why is that? It's because of my socialization. It's because of everything. And I have to be totally aware when that happens. I have to really tap into it. And you know, what's really interesting is that recently I had a sister to sister conversation with a woman, a white woman white woman who's been married for 30 years to a black man and she told me that she too to this day will see a black person walking down the street and will have that fear 30 years with a black man and she still has that unconscious although now it's conscious and she sees it yes. but it's still an innate thing that happens because we made up that you got to be careful if there it's a black person come on you know, so yes, yes, we make stuff up in ways that really separates us from each other. And we don't even know we're doing it because we were simply socialized that way. That's Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Absolutely. I agree. I still will, you know, when I'm walking and seeing a, a group of black kids on the street, I, I have to second, I have a thought that I'm making stuff up. Mm -hmm. And just to keep walking and say, hello, how you doing? Just like mm -hmm. I would anybody else. Right. But it's starting to pay attention. So once again, thank you all for uh, stepping in today to making stuff up with Wendy. My guest, Trish Carr, and I are talking about uh, unconscious bias and how we use, how we make stuff up around that. So take a minute and think for yourself what are you making stuff up about that is not making you feel as good, connected, um, or achieving the results that you want from those thoughts? So it's just take a minute for yourself to ponder because awareness is key. Once you realize what you're making up, uh, then you can start to change it slowly and surely. I mean, because Trish, have you always used your MSU to benefit you uh, in your life? No, absolutely not. This was, a, I didn't know I was going to get it, um, but I got it through um, taking some transformational workshops, learning about how the subconscious works. Like I stepped into learning that and it, it, I was lucky to be in the right place at the right time. Mm. And so I know everything is made up and I haven't always been like that. And even though I know it and I've taken classes and I've become enlightened <laughs> or worse, woke, which I can't stand that because people use that as a, a weapon. Oh, she's woke. No, she cares about human beings. That's it. Right. Anyway, I, don't get me started. I'm not going to get you started. I know better. <laughs> yeah, so I know you do. <laughs> she always goes, okay, I know. I pressed the button there. Um, but yeah, and I'll tell you, I still have a lot of making stuff up in my brain about me physically. Because I know that from my experience, I work with thousands of women and a good handful of men. And there's this whole thing about body image and do we look good enough? And, and in this comparison culture that we currently live in, like everybody, I'm on Facebook and I'm so happy and look at how great I'm doing on my Instagram posts and look at my video of me and my kids. And you're sitting there going, I can barely get out of bed in the morning because I'm so exhausted. But this person looks fabulous and... 50 is the new 30, come on. Like all of that creates more and more making stuff up. So when I walk into a room, I'm thinking, oh, will they like me? Am I too fat for them? Does my hair look okay? I do that and I have to catch myself and say, it's okay. Uh, uh, whatever they think doesn't matter. What matters is what I think and I'm totally freaking awesome. Yes. I'm totally yes. freaking awesome. And then I can walk in the room and know that I am totally freaking awesome. Oh my God. That's so powerful, Trish, because not only are you speaking to, you know, the impact of making stuff up, what other people are thinking, but how you use your MSU to say, I am 
awesome. You are awesome. You are well, awesome for us and all of you are awesome. And that I have to say, if you're, if there's one area of MSU you want to work on, that's the first place. Yes. Is what are you saying about yourself to yourself? Because everything you say is 100% true in your subconscious. Yes. So your conscious life will reflect what you're saying to yourself. So that falls in everywhere. That falls every, if you're in, I'm in business. If I think people have no money, I don't have any money, you know, and I'm going to think my customers have no money. Yes. Right. If I don't value myself, my customers aren't going to value me. Yes. And what, who you are is reflected in everyone back to you. Yes. So if people aren't including you, are you not including you? Like that's the first place to look is if you're not happy and if I'm not happy in an area of my life, I got to look at where am I creating that same behavior when I talk to myself? Big. It's big. So start it there. It is big. Yeah. Remember, I resonate with that with um, when I was looking for to fall in love and be married. I realized I wasn't loving myself. Yeah. So how could someone else love me? If I didn't at least like myself, you know, now I love myself and there are days that I don't like myself, but I always love myself. Right. right? So I love that Trish. It's right on. That's a beautiful way. And, you know, as we talk about this concept of good mental health, what you think about, you bring about. Now, look, I am not saying in any shape or form that you can go from depression to joy by changing your thoughts. That's not what we're saying here. But what we are saying is that you have a choice of how you think and how you respond. And so the more that you could be conscious about that and choose to make up the good stuff, it's going to improve your mental health. And when you Mm -hmm. feel good, you could do good. Yeah, absolutely. And the other thing is, you know, if you're not feeling good, there's so many ways that you could get support to get out of it. Like, you know, and it doesn't have to be the traditional, let me call a psychiatrist. It doesn't have to be that. I'm a big believer in many of the Eastern modalities that make a huge difference for us. Like even, even having Uh, what do you call the thing where they stick needles in you? Acupuncture. Yes. Even acupuncture can get you to a point because when you're, I'll speak for myself. When you, when I was in a low place uh, at the beginning of 2020 in February, I had severe health issues happen to me and I found myself depressed because I thought I was broken. I don't know what I was thinking. All I know is that my life is going to change. Everything's different. I'm not totally freaking awesome anymore. Like I went down that road and I chose to work with someone who does energy work. So I could have gone and gotten, you know, talk therapy. Truthfully for me, talk therapy seems like not a great thing because, you know, there's talk therapy, there's behavior therapy, and then there's different types of modalities that I'm talking about, hypnotherapy, energy work, Reiki, all kinds of great stuff. And the the amount of time it takes something like, I just saw a statistic on this, 600 um, sessions with a psychiatrist. After 600 sessions with a psychiatrist, 38% of people feel they've gotten better to where they want to be, 38%. But when you use those different modalities, it's more like six to eight sessions and 92% of feel, people feel better. So I opt for that. And I did. I did some energy work with someone. And actually, she did it through Zoom. She lives in London. And we did it. And I'm in South Florida. So we got this. And she just worked through my energy. And the relief I got from working with her And it wasn't going down. Was it your mother's fault that you feel that way? It was none of that. It was simply, where are you now? What's going on? Let's work with your energy. I felt so much better. And once I got that relief, then I could do something about it. Then I could consciously pay attention to my thoughts. But sometimes you're circling the drain and there's no way out unless you ask for help. So I'll tell you the other thing I did was I went on antidepressants 
because I was in such a state that I couldn't get to the point of clarity of being able to do it myself. So, you know, and there's a whole stigma on taking drugs. Oh, it's the Prozac Society. Well, thank goodness I had it because it raised me to a level between the antidepressant and the energy work, it raised me to a level where I could finally recognize I am still totally freaking awesome. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm so glad you found all of that, Trish. And, you know, you're speaking to the complementary medicine, right? And for all of us, it's all of you, me, you, Trish, it's finding the right tool for you. Right. Right. And, and, and it's not usually one. Right? No, correct. Usually a a um, uh, a confluence of things. It is. It's like you have a team. I have Team Wendy, right? right. I have my chiropractor. I have my energy right. worker. I have right. my friends. I have my dog. You know, all of the things that I know improve my mental health. What I read. You know, the people I hang out with. But but having that team of people. That's there, especially to not only buoy you up when you may not be feeling good, when you're making stuff up that's not the good stuff. Yeah. But there to remind you and bring you up and guide you along. That is the key. So right. gosh, so many good tips today, Trish. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. And you, it comes from my own experience. And for me, even though I'm surrounded by all of that, I have a tribe of people. I have Team Trish. When I was feeling broken, I pull away from that. I, I didn't disclose how I was feeling because the, you know, the judgment, the social pariah type of thing. And, you know, the, I don't know, we have to continue to talk about mental health over and over again until it's not a thing anymore. Right, until right. it's understood that physical health, mental health, one you can see, one you can't. But eventually your mental health is going to make you see things in your body that aren't working, right? And then now you're legitimate. Now people see that you have an issue. So the, I agree with you. The fact that it's unseen, but not really, you know, it's just, it's the whole judgment. It's the whole, it's the comparison culture. Yeah. Really, it is the scourge for us is that comparison culture. Yes, yes, agreed, agreed. So each of you that have joined us today, and thank you again for joining us on Making Stuff Up with Wendy and my guest, Trish Carr. If you're enjoying the show, please subscribe below, share this with anyone that you know is either consciously using their MSU and they want to learn more how to improve their mental health or maybe unconsciously using their MSU to create a life that is not serving them. These conversations are geared towards opening up a window of possibility and providing tips, tools, and resources to improve mental health. And, you know, this for me, my big mission is about changing the conversation about mental health. That just as easily as someone could sit down and say, you know, how are you doing today? Oh, well, I just got diagnosed with cancer, God forbid. You know, people, oh, what can I do? But if someone were to say, I want the same reaction with someone to say, oh, I was just diagnosed with depression. Oh, what can I do? Instead of saying, oh, well, maybe you should just think a happy thought. Or, right. You know. <laughs> right. Maybe you should do yoga. Right, right. Do <laughs> yoga, right? So, so it's really about, and it all starts with ourselves. So thank you all for listening to the show. And, um, you know, remember, we all make stuff up. So make up the good stuff. Trish, thank you again so much for being here with us. Any uh, ending comment you have? Uh, sure. Thank so you think? so yeah. much, number one, for having these conversations. And number two, for anybody who's making stuff up that's helping them twirl down the drain instead of come up, consider one person, one person that you can trust with your real thoughts. Just one person and write them a letter. You don't even have to send it. Just write them a letter of everything that you're feeling and everything that you're going through. 
and then do whatever you want with the letter. But that is a way for you to start to get clear on what you're making up. And maybe even seeing it in writing will say, hmm, maybe I'm making some of this stuff up. Oh, nice. That's my suggestion. Very nice. I will take that one uh, as a tool. I've not done that before. So thank you for that. And thank you again to all of you for taking the time to join us on Making Stuff Up with Wendy. Go out there. If you're going to make something up, make up the good stuff. See you next time. Bye. -bye.